Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk about something very interesting. A new article just came out that said that there's going to be over 900,000 units being built across the Sun Belt in all those popular areas that we've been hearing about over the last decade that's going to experience explosive growth. But you know one thing that a lot of people never talk about is how growth actually has to outpace inventory. And now we just learned that a lot of new units are being built in places where all these syndicators have been advertising that we go and invest. So we're going to talk quickly about why it's great to talk, why it's great to invest in Los Angeles. And then um, if you like this type of content, do you want to hear more? Try to subscribe, hit the like button. That'd be very much appreciated. Okay. So number one is... Uh, it's a sec there's a huge secondhand market. So this kind of goes back into the new units issue. So in Los Angeles, you have over 600,000 multifamily properties. Now, yes, most of those properties are in the, you know, five to 20 unit range, but that's excellent actually, because you have to think of it like uh, you go into a swap meet or you go into eBay. The truth of the matter is, um whenever whenever there's a secondhand market you're going to have a range of prices and that price range is going to depend on what the condition of the property the 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 NOI the net operating income the location the demographics all those good stuff so when you have those type of variables and a second and a very big secondhand market then you're going to get very big fluctuations of price and obviously we want to buy at the bottom so if you know what to look for, how to buy at the bottom, and there's a lot of inventory, well, that makes for a great opportunity to make a lot of money. Okay, number two, low cap rate. When you're in Los Angeles, you're going to realize that things are very expensive. Now, that you can say that's a negative, but let me tell you why that's a positive. Okay, so everything trades at a certain cap rate. And as we know, a cap rate is essentially what is your annual return if you pay for the property in cash. Now, that's a hypothetical. Most people don't pay in cash, although there are a lot of people who do pay in cash. Um, but that's just a simple way to compare properties and their, and their rate of return against other properties. Now, depending on the desirability of a location, it may get a lower, a lower cap rate. That means you're going to pay a higher price. So obviously, if you buy a beautiful Starbucks in Santa Monica, you know that's probably going to be a safe investment until this world comes to an end. So that type of investment means that you're going to get a lower rate of return. So if you put in $100,000, you probably only get, get about $3,000 a year in return. That's 3% cap rate. 3,000 divided by 100,000. Now, obviously, you should add a few more zeros if we're talking about a Starbucks in Santa Monica, but you get the idea. Okay. So, but why is that a good thing if you have to pay a higher price? Well, I'll tell you, if you're flipping like I am, then every dollar of net operating income that you increase the property by, you're getting a higher multiple. Let's just, let's just do a quick example. If you had a 10% cap rate and you bought something in, say, Arizona, okay, uh, not Arizona, probably something like North Dakota. Arizona is even getting expensive now. You go to North Dakota, you get 10% cap rate. If I increase the you know the NOI by say ten dollars then I've only increased the value of the property say a thousand dollars which is good but you can do better in LA um, properties trade anywhere between three and five percent okay so let's just take five percent if you increase the NOI on a multifamily property or a commercial property by $10, then you essentially have to multiply that by 20 to get your, you know, the, the increase in value. That's a 20x. It's a 20x for every dollar you put into the property. Okay, that's huge. It's huge. So instead of $1,000, $2,000 all of a sudden. Okay. Now, what about if it's um, a 3% cap rate? which is what a lot of properties trade for in Los Angeles. Decently good areas trade for three and a half cap. So, but let's just take 3% cap. That's a 33 X on every NO, every dollar of NOI. Now the downside again is probably you're going to say is the price, but we're going to get into that. 
Okay, so we talked about um, the large secondhand market, which is excellent in this area. It means I'll be busy till the day I die flipping apartments here in LA. Number two, we talked about cap rate. Low cap rate when you're flipping is excellent because that means I'm making a lot of money for every dollar that I'm increasing NOI. And number three, you're going to think this is confusing again because it is confusing, are the confusing state laws. There's local laws and then there's state laws. In fact, there are many channels that you can find that specifically are dedicated just to the ridiculous amount of different local and state laws. So you have the city of LA, you have the city of Hawthorne, the city of Santa Monica, the city of Alhambra, the city of Monterey Park, blah, 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 blah. And every single one of these cities has a different law. And on top of that, you have the state law. And the state law is at least easy. Once you learn that one and you work in the state, then you don't have to really, you know, go back to that one again. So once you figure out the state law, the city law is much easier to figure out. Okay, now why, why is that a great thing? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because when you have a large inventory of secondhand, um, second mar second, secondhand essentially market um, properties of multifamily properties, you have an aging population of ownership. Um, you know, people in their 60s and 70s who are looking to retire and they have rents that are very, very low. And now it's time for them to let go of the property because maybe they don't have any heirs to, to you know, give their properties to, or maybe their, maybe their children are simply just not even interested in real estate. They're like, I don't want to deal with tenants, toilets, and termites. Give that to someone else. Just give me the cash, please. I want to go sit on a beach some, somewhere. So the, so the parents are like, well, who's going to manage this? Because we both know it's not easy. You got tenants, termites, and toilets. It's a problem. So they, they, look, they look say, well, hey, is the, you know, should I raise the rents first? Because if I raise the rents, I'll get more money, right? Well, the problem is they're like, oh, my God, what are the laws? Am I going to break the law? Do I have to give them notice? Am I going to get sued? Do I really want to go through that hassle? I'm old. I just want the money. I'm tired of this. Blah, 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 blah. Let it go, right? But the rents are low. So how are they going to, what are they going to do? They can't, they can only sell it for so much. And that's why properties sell at low cap rates. Most of the time when you see a property that's at a very low cap rate and it's not in a super highly desirable area, then that's because the rents are super low. They know someone can go in there, you know, flip it, but they have to make, they have to incentivize it because a retail investor isn't going to buy a 3% cap rate in a so-so area. But an investor like me, I'll do it because I know I'm going to remodel it. I'm going to increase the NOI. I'm going to turn it into a three cap, into like a six cap, and then I'm going to sell it. I'm going to make money or I'll keep it or I'll keep it and I'll refinance it. Although I don't like to do that because then there's too much equity in the property with interest rates so high right now. And, um, and you, you, have to, you have to keep a lot more equity in the property, and it's just better to sell. It's just better to sell. Okay, so anyways, where are we? We're going to, we talked about the high price points. So what are you going to do? We're going to talk about this before we get into the conclusion. What do you do if price points are too high? You got to raise money. You got to come up with money. Where are you going to get the money? You need money. And I would say to play in this game, you need at least half a million dollars to play with, Okay. If you get half a million dollars, you can play. Now, before you turn it off and you quit and you go sit back down and you think of maybe I should buy Section 8 rentals in, in Ohio or something, let me give you some advice, okay? One thing about real estate is unless you have a lot of money, I most highly suggest that you do something close to you because you're going to run into problems. You're going to run into people who rip you off, and it's not a good combination if you're starting out. And it's better if you can get at least close to the property to save yourself a lot of time and trouble. So what do you do? You gotta raise money. I had another video about raising money, get money from family and friends. I know it's a hard thing to do, but trust me, if you're really interested in breaking into this market, um, you don't need a lot of money to start. What you need is a lot of passion. You're gonna need to convince your, your family, your mommy, your daddy, your brother, your sister, to chip in, because if you can, the returns are, 
outrageous. They're they're excellent. They're, they're really unbeatable, and you can do 1031. There's lots of tax benefits, etc., etc. So in conclusion, investing in high places like Los Angeles is like investing in a blue chip stock or the S&P 500. Everyone bags on Los Angeles because they say, oh, the net, the net amount of people are moving out. They're moving to Arizona. They're moving to Texas. The growth in Texas is excellent. The growth in Arizona, wow, Florida, um, you know, South Dakota, whatever. What they don't tell you is those places have a very high risk because those areas are the ones that overbuild. They have way too much land. Builders go in there. They jack up the inventory. And when recessions hit, that's where you're going to see 50% declines, 60% declines. You don't see that. I mean, you you may see it in L.A., but let me tell you, if you see it in L.A., it's going to be much worse everywhere else. And you know the first markets to come back is going to be the blue chip markets. You just know that. So I highly invest in staying um, in places that are safe, like L.A., and maybe your metro too. So, hey, if you like this content, subscribe, hit the like button. I'm trying to grow the channel. Very much appreciate it. Thank you.